My Sisterhood sponsors Education Matters. I do nothing. So you don't do any homework? No. <laughs> you cannot have education without reading. Reading! Oh, no. Wait for me. We're late. Wait for me. Wait for me. When you scoot out of Parsons Green Tube Station, you find yourself in a leafy inner city village. Walk down a side street and you stumble across Almunta, the primary school. It looks very small from the outside, but inside big things are taking place. Hi, I'm Neil Reynolds and this is Education Matters. The school started in the late 80s and it's been here for uh, well nearly 30 years now right? and it's been quite a successful school and um, I came here approximately two years ago and the idea was to improve the school further, uh, look at the curriculum, look at leadership and management and see whether we can do even a, uh, an even better job. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. Uh, our assembly today is going to be about a certain personality, a certain man. And the reason I've chosen this topic for assembly, because yesterday someone sent me a message and they said that UNESCO have said that Islam is the religion of peace. So let's just go through it and see whether you can pick out who I'm talking about. Al Muntada School is about creating opportunities and life chances um, and serving humanity. That's our main vision of the school. And the, this vision has been discussed by all the staff members of the school and we think that this is what we are, we are about and this is what we want to reflect in the children that we teach. George Bernard Shaw, a very famous Irish playwright, what did he say? He said, I've always held the religion of Muhammad in high estimation because of the wonderful vitality it is the only religion which appears to me to possess the assimilating capacity to the changing phase of existence which can make itself appeal to every age. I have studied him, the wonderful man, and in my opinion he must be called the saviour of humanity. Okay children, today we are going to play a game. This is called a cowboy game. And this is a competition in times table. What you are going to do is, two at a time, you stand back to back, and I'll, I'll shoot out a times table. And you have to answer. The one who answers quickly turns around and shoots the person. Children call me Miss Anjum. I'm Anjum Tariq Qazi, and I'm a deputy head of this school. One time six. Six. There you go, well done, Iman. Yes. Now, yeah. Back to back. Okay, nine times two. Eight, eight, eight. 
Okay, yeah. Thank you, Iman. You can sit. Now, seven. Let's see. Shoot a number. Okay. A ten table. Eighteen. Eight. Well done, Sabir. Excellent. Do you like times tables? Not really. <laughs> you don't really like times tables. But you did really well in that game. How many points did you get? Three. You got three points. Yeah. Now you. Okay. Yes? Four times six. <laughs> Twenty-four. Well done. Excellent. When you're connecting with, uh, with children, uh, behavior management is never a problem because they are focused. They want to listen to you, they want to follow you, so they are not distracted. So once you are disconnected, children are disconnected and then the issues come up, uh, mismanagement and classroom management goes out of the window. Five times seven. Five, five. Yes, indeed. Next. Eight times, eight times nine. Eight times nine. Seventy-two. Yes, indeed. Three times nine. Twenty-seven. What do you think of Miss Angel? She's very nice and she's a good teacher. You like Miss Angel? She's funny sometimes and what I like about her is um, sometimes she teaches us. It's a bit fun with her. Two times six. Twelve. Mmm, clever. I need to be faster now. Three times nine. Eighteen. <laughs> Cheating! I saw you. You saw me? <laughs> oh. Six times five. Thirty. One. Oh. Thirty-one. Seven times four. Twenty-eight. Woo! Five times three. Fifteen. Woo! Miss Anjum is a very high class teacher. Our SATS results show testament to our expertise. Her children love her and now she's giving back by helping our newer teachers uh, uh, on a daily basis. Thank you, Thank you. my pleasure, that was fun, I enjoyed that. Yes, winner. Winner! Well, shall we say mashallah to Neil? Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Well done. So, I'm here with Yumna from Year 5 and today at Al Munta the School they're having a Meet My Neighbours Day to show the neighbourhood what goes on at the school and invite them in and, and teach them a little bit more about Islam. Now, Yumna, we're going into the gym, so what's going on in there? Well, we have different sorts of um, places where different years, like Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2, from Year, year Reception to Year 6, They've been doing different science experiments, been learning about different things, and here they've just set them up so we can see what's going on in the classes. So. Cool. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Can you read the Arabic? Yes, I can. We have uh, different teachers. So um, here's different. So there's, for example. See, I think that says petal. It is petal, but in Arabic it's called. Betella. 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 Which way do you read it from? It's from here. From right to left? Yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. Betella. And here is Hush. Hushab. Hushab. Oh, wow. So, Ru is here. Yeah. Ru Shab. Oh, which wow. means grass. Okay. And Ma and right here is Roots also. You're very good. Yeah. So, let's move on to the next one because these look like volcanoes to me. Yeah, so this is what and reception. That was kind of the clue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, reception have been doing these. They've been learning about the fluids on what makes an explosion. For example, okay. um, the fluid that they have used right now, maybe later will make them like yeah, last wow. off. But what happened? We put bicarbonate of soda with um, vinegar. Yeah. So, white malt vinegar. Uh -huh. um, and we put them together, and reception have just enjoyed them watching them oh, explode I bet. and making them also. Now 
Now I'm with Sabeda. How are you? Good. Sabeda's in year four. Now, there's something behind us that I'm not entirely sure about, which I probably should know about, but Sabeda's going to talk me through it. So, Sabeda, what do we have here? We have um, a hedge, and this hedge is, is, is like, when you go to hedge, you, you, you face it, so when you pray, you have to face this, or otherwise, if you face, or otherwise, if you face another place, that you won't, you won't actually be praying. So you have to face this bit, and this is made out of a, um, a cover, or, and it's a, it's a good material. And under it, people have been doing, have been. We made it with cardboard, and um, we and this grey bit and the white bit is um, is made out of chalk. Education. Education is actually knowledge around you. Education is a form or a means of success, a means of going forward. Because if you have no education, then the whole world will just crumble. Because in the Quran, the first thing that was re revealed to the Prophet Sallam, that I stressed to the children is read. What does education mean to you? It means that it means learning to me and well, it means that it can help me in my life, so I have to concentrate on it a lot. Islamically, education is about bringing up the child and nurturing them. Education isn't only learning, I think it's like the activities and the things you learn at school, like subjects and stuff. You cannot have education without reading. So for me, as year one teacher, my focus on the children is reading. And if they can read, they can do math, they can do science, they can do anything that comes in their way. They can overcome all their struggles. Education is um, an important thing in your life because if you don't know education and somebody asks you something and they'll be surprised that you don't know, education is a very important thing in your life. In bringing up that human being, they need to be educated and uh, that's both physically, morally, intellectually and spiritually so that you get a complete insan which means the perfect man. Right, so how many boats have we got? Two. There's two boats. There's a hippo. That's and a hippo. This, and, this is a dolphin. and that's a shark. And this is no. a dolphin. No. This is a hippo. No? And, and, this is a and, dolphin. Is it? And that's a hippo. And this is no. a dolphin. That's an octopus. Dolphin. Oh, that's a dolphin. I thought that was a hippo. Who's your favourite teacher? Miss Shazna. Miss yeah. Shazna! Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Miss Shazna. And what does Miss Shazna teach you? Lots of stuff. Like what? Stories. Stories, yeah. Little stories. Marwa's Learning. Mar Learning, yes. Spelling. Spelling. Homework. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, let's do puzzles. Can you do, are you any good at puzzles? Are you sure? Are you very good at puzzles? Yeah. We've got to be really quick. We've got to do it really quickly. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 oh I don't know what, oh no, that's not right. See, somebody's messed it all up now. That's not fair. I'm really impressed. And hold up, don't look behind you, but there's a black panther. Have you 
Have you ever been in trouble at school? Mm. Never? Mm -mm. Sometimes. Um, I have been in trouble, but I haven't been into really big trouble. What do you get into trouble for, Mawa? He told me my ear. Um, she said not listening. Do your parents know you got in trouble? Yeah. Did you tell them? Mm, yes. Are you sure? I can never. I don't get in trouble. Our lesson today is going to be on factors. So what have factors got to do with anything? And since you're five and six, you will know already from your early years what factors are all about. Now, on your sheet that I've given you, there's this part which says square numbers. I want you to ignore that for now. We're just looking at that. And it starts off by saying, arrange 12 pegs in a rectangle. I've given you all a pegboard and I've now given you a handful of pegs. I trained as a teacher in the very early 80s. I graduated with a degree in mathematics and then went on to find a vocation and teaching seemed to be something that I slotted into very nicely and it just came naturally to me and uh, I've loved it every single day. Till, to, till today, and I'm at my best when I'm in the classroom. <laughs> if you read your sheet, it says you need to make the pa a pattern of 12 pegs. So you should, you should have 12 pegs like this. There you are, there's 12 pegs there. Math isn't my favorite subject, but I'm not bad at it. I'm on the second highest table, but. Yamna, what are the factors of 15? I've got 15 pegs. What, have, what are the factors? The factors are mm, 5 and 3. Well done. That's how it is. How easy is that? My background is mathematics. I revel in, you know, I really enjoy teaching it and it, it's who I am. Of course, my experience over the years has led me to understand that a child will be more interested in the subject if you teach, if you make it real to the child. And therefore, i.e. if they can relate it to the real world. And that's what I try to do in everything that I teach, so that they can see the relevance of it. Arrange 16 pegs in a rectangle as many different ways as you can. Okay, so there's more than one way of doing it. Off you go. Oh, Mr. Mali, he's full of energy. He's lovely. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, given a lot to the school. And I and, and hope he's there with us for much more longer. <laughs> Tell me about the last time you saw Mr. Amjad singing. He's singing in assembly, some song. And then we, year five and six, saw him and we started laughing at him. What was he singing? Some song, an English song. One of the songs that he was showing the whole school and he started singing along with it. Mr. Amjad's a happy and he's like always smiling teacher. He's very simple, like somebody easy to understand and somebody to get along with easily. So is it very often that you see the head teacher singing? <laughs> no. I think he's a good management, but um, when I want, like once I told him, um, could we please have, can we please use the you know the grasshoppers, yeah? I told him, can we please have them back now? Can we have them back like we did um, before? So he said okay, but then he didn't let Key Stage 2 use them. He only let Key Stage 1, but then Key Stage 2 were the one who asked. Has anyone got some answers for me? I'll, I'm, I'm looking, I'll give you one now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. And I've arranged them, 16 pegs, four across, four down. And I say four times four is 16. And if you notice, wait, if I do that, I can make a special shape out of that. What's, what's that shape? It's not very accurate, but you can make out what it is. It's a square. So 16 is a special number. 
it's, it's actually called a square number as well because it makes a square pattern. It's a square number. Now that's good. Thank you for recognizing that because it says rectangle. But did you know, did you know that a square is a rectangle? Now that might seem odd to you because rectangles are always like this, oblong. Yeah, always like this. But when the sides of a rectangle get closer and closer to each other, they're all rectangles. All of these are rectangles, but that's a special rectangle. And we call that a square. It still belongs to the family of rectangles. Remember, rectangles is a family name. So we've had a great day here at El Monte de School. There's some amazing teachers, some amazing facilities, and there are some really great kids. And Black Panther and I both agree that here at El Monte de, education really matters. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs>